So let's look at the main commands that you need to use Subversion. Um, let's first create a Subversion repository. Uh, in this example, the repository is a subdirectory that we shall call capital SVN, and we put this in our home directory. So we just write SVN admin create and the location where we want to have the uh, repository. Then we need to check out from the repository a working directory. The working directory will be separate from the repository. Let's say we put uh, another subdirectory in our home directory called wdir for working directory. And in the SVN checkout command, you have to refer to the location of the repository by URL. This is to facilitate various remote access protocols in case you access the repository, as I mentioned, via SSH or via HTTP. But in this case, we just access the repository via the file system, uh, the local file system. So we use the file colon slash slash uh, URL and then the path to our home directory. And the uh, additional argument here is the name of the working directory. When you create a new working directory and you look inside it, you will see that at the top level it has a hidden dot SVN subdirectory and that contains some metadata. In particular, it remembers the location of your repository. So in future um, operations that you perform in your working directory, Subversion will automatically know which repository this uh, came from. You can also display that information with SVN info. But it also keeps there, for example, uh, copies of the versions that you got when you last time did an update from the repository, such that if the repository is remote on a different server, you can, for example, use SVN diff to compare changes uh, against a local copy of the uh, most recent version from the repository. And now <clears throat> we can populate the uh, repository with uh, content and this involves three steps. You first either create some files, you start writing your project or you copy files from an existing project that you had elsewhere into your working directory. Then you have to tell Subversion which files in the working directory it actually should look after and which not. So for example, if you use a compiled programming language like C, then the manually written files, the .c and .h files, you want to keep in the uh, repository, whereas the compiler produced files, the .o files and executables and so on, which change all the time, uh, you don't want to keep in the repository because you can just ask the compiler to reproduce these at any time. So also, su such frequently uh, changing binary files you couldn't review in a useful way. So uh, unless you have some particular reason that you want to preserve exactly bit for bit a compiler produced binary file you may want to check in that in those cases those into the repository but normally you don't put automatically generated files into the repository so you use the svn add command to tell subversion which files that you have in your working directory you actually wanted uh, to track and when you've done this that doesn't actually add them themselves yet but the svn commit command is now the first command that actually uh, contacts the uh, repository and sends the added files there. And after that, every team member who also has their own working directory uh, created this way can do an svn update, then make some edits and then push those edits back with svn commit. And they will also be asked for a commit message. So SVN add and the name of one or more file names puts a new file or an entire folder under version control. Uh, one warning here, if you add a directory, a folder, then by default it will add all content in the folder as well. And this may contain, for example, some compiler output files that you or backup files that you don't actually want added. In that case, it's usually advisable to use SVN add minus capital N 
such that if, it, if you list a directory here, only the directory itself will be added and then you can go into the directory and add individual files from there and it doesn't recursively add everything. Um, there's commands to subversion commands to delete files, to copy files, to move files. Um, none of these four commands here will actually communicate with the uh, repository. So their effect initially is only local. They will earmark the file for addition, for deletion, for copying, for moving. But the actual operation will be performed on the repository only when you actually commit all of these back. Remember, don't use the normal rmcpmv uh, delete copy move files on working files that are under subversion control because otherwise these operations will not be reflected in the repository after your next commit. So for example, if you delete a file just with rm, it will pop back into existence at the next SVN update because Subversion wasn't told that the file wasn't meant to be there. So it puts it back into place. Um, you can use things like copy and move if you need to make uh, local copies, but not if you actually want these changes to be reflected in the repository. Um, before you do a commit, you can do an SVN status that lists all these uh, earmarked operations uh, that have be, are queued for uh, the next commit. So it will list files that will be changed in the repository at the next commit uh, and will, there will be a letter in front of them to indicate what that change will be, whether a file has been added or deleted or modified or replaced. There is a distinction that Subversion makes whether an old and a new file are the same file or different files. So if you just change a file, by editing it, that's a modification. Whereas if you deleted a file and then you added a new file, that's actually a replacement of a file and that file will actually have its own version history rather than there, there will be no record of what was the difference between the deleted and the added file. Um, SVN status will also show with a question mark any unversioned files that it doesn't know anything about. So these may be um, compiler output files, uh, you can uh, use option minus Q to suppress the display of these. And if Subversion thinks there should be a file, but it can't find it, then there will be an exclamation mark indicating a missing file. And these will be reinstated at the next SVN update. And similar to RCS diff with SVN diff, you can check what differences uh, differences between file versions. If you don't specify any version, then your current working copy will be compared against the copy uh, that you received at the last SVN checkout. So SVN diff gives you a preview of the changes for your files that will be sent to the uh, repository at the next commit. And as already mentioned, SVN info gives you some metadata like what is the revision number of the last update, what's the URL of the repository. Um, revisions are named just with uh, natural numbers, version uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. And then the two most important commands, SVN uh, commit, that actually sends to the repository any modified, added, removed files, copied, renamed files. Um, it will pop up an editor, which editor depends on what's in your editor environment variable and will in, it will show you inside the editor as a comment what files, what operations it's going to perform on what files to remind you of the changes and warn you again in case you are about to commit changes to files that you didn't intend to change. And it invites you to leave a message for either your future self or your other team members to give a brief summary of what you have changed in that commit. Uh, do take these uh, commit comments seriously because when you look at the log history, they can help you quite a lot finding a particular old version that you want to look at. And then SVN update gets the updates your working directory to the 
latest versions, uh, it will use similar letters as SVN uh, status in order to tell you for each file what kind of modification it has made, whether added a file, deleted a file, modified a file. Um, in the case of a modified file, you get a U updated if a file that wasn't locally modified has been replaced by a newer version. If on the other hand, you had already, you have already in your working directory some local modifications and Subversion was successful in automatically merging changes that someone else has made into your locally modified file, then this will be indicated by listing the file name preceded with the letter G, which stands for merged. So there was a version conflict, but it was automatically resolved because the lines that have been edited are sufficiently far apart. But if the same lines or neighbor lines have been edited, that will result in a conflict, which is then indicated as a C. If you do encounter a conflict, then Subversion will help you to resolve these. It will actually uh, write out all three file versions involved. So you will see in total four different uh, file names. You will see the original file, you will see the file that only contains your changes. You can see the file that only contains the other party's changes and the actual working file without any uh, extension added will be the file in which Subversion uh, tried to merge the changes, but at some places it will highlight context. You will see lines that start with a lot of either greater than or less than signs where it highlights these were the lines from your version, these were the lines from the other version. Please sort out the mess yourself. And then you have to go in with the editor and do the merge, merge manually. If you then have been successful in uh, resolving the merge, you have to tell Subversion that you have done so. It will not assume that you've done it on its own. And this is done with the SVN resolved command. If you don't want to resolve anything and you're happy to just uh, go with what the other person has done and you want to uh, discard your version, then instead you can also use SVN revert. SVN revert sets your working directory back to the version uh, that it had at the last SVN update. So you can use this to discard any local changes that you have made, including any any conflicts that uh, your local changes may have uh, created. So if you started something and then decide after a few minutes, maybe that's a bad idea, then SVN revert file name is your friend. Uh, other commands uh, with SVN LS, you can list the uh, directory entries in the repository so you can quickly see which files are actually in the repository as opposed to what are local unversion files. And with SVN cat, you can output file contents from the repository. So you can write either SVN cat minus R and a version number and then the file name. Uh, you can also provide here an entire URL if you call SVN cat outside a repository. Um, if you use SVN cat minus R file name, then it's possible that if the file has been replaced at some point uh, and you refer to the previous incarnation of the file, that this will not be accessible uh, that way because the file name will be mapped to the latest version or the current version of the file and its history starts where it was added. If there was previously another name a file of the same name, then a subversion won't find that under that history. If instead you put the uh, revision number after the file name with an at sign, then you tell subversion first go back into that version and then look in the, in, into that revision number and then in that revision number in the database, look what the file of that file name there is. And this way you can identify the correct history. Some of these commands can also be applied directly to a repository without a working directory. 
uh, and that's uh, the case when you specify a your entire URL instead of a file name, as I mentioned here for SVN cat already. So, for example, we can uh, copy one file uh, to another file, and we refer to files here by the URL of the repository. So up to here, up to SVN, this is the name of the repository. Inside the repository, you, you will not actually see uh, any files, but you continue the URL using the file uh, system structure that you see in your working directory. But these aren't actually existing Unix files uh, because Subversion uses not the normal data, not the normal file system, but some uh, to store these files, but uh, some database format that you don't have to worry about how exactly it works. The SVN copy operation uh, is actually a constant time operation. It doesn't actually copy data around. It just makes a note that this file or folder here shall now be a copy of uh, another already existing file at a particular revision in the repository. And therefore, um, in order to tag, for example, a release uh, where you want to give some symbolic name to a particularly important uh, commit in your repository, you can just make a copy because these copies don't cost a much, co don't cost a lot. And if you want to do this, then it's customary that in your uh, repository, the top level directory has uh, three folders called trunk, tags, and branches. And trunk is the uh, actual, contains the actual content of your working directory, the latest version of the project. And then from time to time, you copy the trunk into tags under some release number in order to just keep a backup copy of a particular version. So when trunk contains the big release 1.0 that went to the uh, customer a couple of minutes ago, then you do this copy operation to keep a copy of everything that was in trunk at that time under release 1.0. That making the copy doesn't cost much and you then can check out uh, that release in case the customer has a problem with their version that can't be reproduced in, in the current version anymore. You, has, you have easily access to that.